can lead to swim bladder problems. And there's the instant baby brine shrimp. I can stick them to the side of the tank. The other benefit of using a syringe is my hands have not come in contact with any of the fish food here. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I thought I'd show you what it's like to run the fish room and what my daily routine is in here. So let's get into this week's video. So the first thing I do when I get in the fish room is turn the light on. I'll bring you in. So after I leave the room light on for about 10 to 15 minutes, I come in here and turn each individual tank light on. That gives, that time, that 10 to 15 minutes give the fish enough time to get used to that amount of light in the fish room without shopping them too much once all their individual LED units turn on. Now that that time has come, I'm gonna turn all the lights on. Now I'll wait around another five minutes, let the fish get used to this amount of light and I'll start feeding the fish. In the meantime, I'm gonna soak some pellets in aquarium water to get them to soften up. Okay, now that all the lights are on in the fish room, I can use my spotlight so you can see me a little bit easier now. So the next thing I do is I use these containers that you can get from your local grocery store. I believe they're used for make or putting desserts in them uh, to get the shape formed uh, for venues for events, like for weddings and stuff like that but I use them to defrost my frozen foods and to soak the aquarium pellets in aquarium water in these containers. So you might think it might be a little bit tricky to get your aquarium food in these containers, uh, but I use a funnel. So a funnel, pop the funnel in there, get the fish food of your choice. So I've got my pellets here. I can see how much I'm measuring out at the bottom there. That's about it. And then I know how much I'm feeding to my fish every day because I fill it up to a certain line that is in these cups. Now, don't forget to close your food. If you're keeping food in the fish room, make sure you close the container because it will spoil from the moisture in the fish room. The next thing I do is put water in this. So, simply using aquarium water so get your aquarium water in your container and stir the pellets up. This is a new life spectrum pellet called Grow. And it actually does like to float, uh, but as you can see, half float, half sink. So it's not a true floating pellet, but I like to get the air bubbles out from underneath where the pellets are sitting. And that ensures that they're gonna, the, that they're gonna absorb all that aquarium water and swell up in this container rather than swelling up into your, in your fish's gut. I believe pellets that aren't pre-soaked in aquarium water before feeding can lead to swim bladder problems. I'm not sure about that, it's not a scientific thing. I've just had some fish over the years develop swim bladder problems and since soaking the pellets in aquarium water before feeding them to the fish, I've noticed that those swim bladder problems don't rear, rear their ugly heads. So I recommend that you soak your aquarium pellets in aquarium water first before you feed them to your fish. That way they don't ex expand in your fish's gut. They're pre-expanded before they eat them. So the problem I have when I feed dry pellets to fish is that the fish may eat more than they normally would because the pellets are a small size. Now, as the pellets start to swell up in their gut, they could compress on their organs. So that's why I like to pre soak the pellets first before I feed them to the fish. They swell up in this container first to their maximum size, and then the fish eat, and then they're not gonna eat more than they can take on. That minimizes the risk of them swelling and bloating the fish. So that's what I recommend you do. Again, it's on a scientific study. It's just something that I like to do just to minimize the uh, chances of them developing a swim bladder problem. Next thing I do, is get some frozen food and pop it in this container. And today, that frozen food of choice is mysa shrimp. So I feed the guys a combination of frozen mysa shrimp, frozen brine shrimp, as well as frozen daphnia. So I'm just gonna pop four cubes into this container now. They're in the container. Pop them in the aquarium. And then because these containers have straight edges, I can stick them to the side of the tank and they'll stay there and the food will defrost quicker. So if I take that container out and sit it on top of the tank, 
it will take a little bit longer to defrost than it's sitting inside the aquarium with that warm aquarium water constantly helping defrost that food a little bit quicker. I'll just let that sit there for a while, let it defrost. We've got our other food here, the pellets soaking in aquarium water. Let them rest, let them soak up all that aquarium water, expanding in that container rather than expanding in the fish's gut. And the next thing I do is feed the fry their baby food. So today I'm feeding them this baby brine shrimp. Tomorrow I'll feed them live microworms. And you can see the cultures I've got growing here on this aquarium. So what I'm gonna do now is pop a spoonful of this into each tank that has fry. And you can see the brine shrimp in this jar. Uh, they're all nice bright orange. I've got the little spoon. Go on my stand and feed the fish. And there's the instant baby brine shrimp and all the fry having a feed. So the tank up here is my newest spawn of Neolamprologus leafy fry. The tank next to those guys has got some Neolamprologus brevis fry. In here, we've got some Lampralogus ocellatus gold fry. And this tank here has my Neolamprologus leafy breeding pair in it. They're about to spawn again, but I'm gonna leave them alone for now because there's no fry in that aquarium. Next tank getting some food. There's this one over here. And it has my black Alto Lampralogus calvus in it. And the last tank getting some food is this one up here. And that has my white Alto Lampralogus calvus fry in it. But I'll need to take the microphone off to reach that tank. So all the fry in the fish room have been fed their baby brine shrimp and the return pumps have been put into feed mode. This feed mode turns the return pumps off, allowing the baby fish to eat their food easily without expending too much energy to get to that food. The feed mode stays on for about 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes is up, the pumps turn back on automatically and return to their wattage that they were at before I put them into feed mode. That all happens automatically. So, so having that feed mode is really good uh, and you don't, you don't have to turn them off from the power board and then remember to turn them back on. You just press the button and that goes into feed mode. The next thing to do is make sure you put your baby brine shrimp back in the fridge. All right, now while all that has been happening, the mice shrimp has continued to defrost and these pellets have expanded. You can see how much they've changed from when I first put them in this container. So they are expanding there. They've reached their maximum size and they're ready to feed to the fish now. So I'm gonna pop that there. Next thing I'm gonna do is get the mice shrimp out. And that's fully defrosted now. Pop that here. So the next thing that I do is get this little syringe and suck up some of the pellets or the mice shrimp, depending on which fish are getting fed that specific food. The benefit of having the syringe is the action of sucking up the food, drawing that food into the syringe further mashes it up, softening it up even more for the smaller fish to eat. Uh, if you've got fry in the tank, having a syringe will help you crush those pellets up. You don't have to crush them while they're dry, just let them soak in aquarium water. The action of drawing the pellets into the syringe will help mash them up and then when you inject them into the aquarium, they'll get mushed up further and there'll be a range of grain sizes for your fish to feed off. The other benefit of having a syringe is with the floating pellets, when you suck up the floating pellets in this, into the syringe, and inject them into the aquarium, they no longer float. I hate floating pellets, especially because I run a sump system that can go over into the plumbing and down into the sump. I prefer sinking pellets, so because these pellets float, the majority of them float, uh, the syringe helps bypass that issue for me. The other benefit of using a syringe is my hands have not come in contact with any of the fish food here. The pellets, you saw I poured them straight into this container using a funnel. I then am using a syringe to put them into the aquarium. If you have soap or some sort of residue on your hands, feeding a fish this way is gonna ensure you're not potentially polluting your aquariums. The other good thing with using a syringe is when I'm sucking in the mysa shrimp, it's chopping up the mysa shrimp into fine parts. So all the fry, feeding them the mysa shrimp is no problem because the mere action of drawing the mysa shrimp into the syringe has chopped all those mysa shrimp up into small pieces. Okay, so the 10 minutes is up. The return pumps have just turned on. You'll be able to notice some rippling effect across all the aquariums now. And you'll notice that the water level in these aquariums will now rise to about here. And it will rise about a centimetre until that water goes over the bulkhead at the back of the aquariums through the plumbing and then back down to the sump. So now I'm just going to continue to feed all the fish in the fish room.
So that's all the tanks on this side of the fish room fed. Next is the tanks on this side. And I lie, I have fed one tank on this side, the Neolamprologus simulus, they got some mysis shrimp. So I'm gonna feed all the bristlenose catfish on this side now and the guppies, I'm gonna show you what I do with those. You can see that there are some tanks that are turned off down here. There's bristlenose catfish in these two tanks down here. And these tanks over here, lights are off as well, but there are bristlenose catfish in them. Now with my bristlenose catfish tanks, I don't like to leave the light on. I like to have the light off because that's what they prefer. So they get enough ambient light in the fish room during the day from the tanks that are on all day long, which are these six. The guppies, there's plants in here. They need light to grow. Obviously the plants need that light. And in here, we've got my Neolamprologus similis. So the lights are on here. So what I'm gonna do now is feed the guppies. I just feed them a flake food that I get from my uh, cichlid society and this baby pellet food that I get from the cichlid society as well. Simple as that. <laughs> These guppies are so tame. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but the moment I appear in front of the tank, they just swarm at front. They know they're gonna get fed. They almost jump out when I slide the lid back. So here we go. Give them a tiny bit of flake, tiny bit of these fried powdered pellet, and that's it. That's all there is to it for that tank. So you can see I keep these in Ziploc bags. They just come in a simple plastic bag when I buy them from the society, and then I transfer them into some Ziploc bags to keep the moisture out. Simple as that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is feed the baby bristlenose catfish some carrots today. I've shown you these carrots before, as well as the green beans. They come in some cans that you can get from your local grocery store. Very, very simple food to give to your uh, bristlenose catfish. They love them. And I'm just gonna pop a few in the tanks now. So the first thing I do with this is, I slide all the lids open of all my bristlenose catfish tanks. That makes the job a whole lot quicker. And grab the carrots and crush them. I like to crush them because the carrots have a little bit of skin on them and the bristlenose catfish to prevent them having to struggle to break through that skin and get to the carrot. Uh, I just crush them a little bit. Fry down here, normal colored bristlenose, the short fin variety in this tank, pumping out both albino and Normal coloured short fin bristlenose, so that's enough for them. Got my breeding colony of long fin bristlenose in here. The parents are the normal coloured long fin bristlenose, but they're also pumping out long fin albinos. They also pump out short fin uh, bristlenose, both the albino and normal coloured as well. So the bristlenose catfish are in, that are in here, the adults, normal coloured long fin bristlenose, pumping out four different varieties of bristlenose from this little colony that's in here. Pretty amazing. So that's the food for them. In this tank, we've got four peppermint bristlenose. I haven't bred them. I try to leave them in the tank, let them do their thing, and I just like to forget about them. They're very slow growing fish, and I let them do their thing. And in this last tank here, we've got my Albino bristlenose breeding pair. Pure blood albino. They, don't, they do not pump out uh, normal colored bristlenose or long fin bristlenose. They purely are short fin albino bristlenose catfish. So my breeding pair there, close the lids on that. On those two tanks, pop this back in the fridge, cover it with the cling wrap again. So the next thing I do is relax for a couple hours until it's night and I feed the fish again but the things are a little bit different with that. So it's a few hours later now, and I'm gonna turn all the lights off in the fish room, except the room light. Then what I'm gonna do is feed the bristlenose catfish that are in the top row of tanks, and the, some of them that are in the middle row of tanks. I like to turn the lights off in the fish room to give them their time now so they can eat. Because if I put food in the tanks now for the bristlenose, the fry in the top row of tanks, and the fish in the middle row of tanks will eat that food before the bristlenose can get to them. So I'll wait until the lights are about to be turned off to do all that. So I'm just turning the lights off on all the tanks now. And 
and you're feeding carrot to the baby bristlenose that are in these tanks tonight. Some of these tanks have more bristlenose than the others and I feed the appropriate amount of food for how many bristlenose are in each of those tanks. So there you have it guys, my daily routine in the fish room. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.